In the olden days, when gods were as commonplace as a sushi bar at a shopping mall, the universe was a chaotic blob of who knows what. Up there in the heavens is Anaji and Izanami, two of the most bickering deities since the invention of soap operas, were tasked with creating something solid in that cosmic jam, namely Earth. Of course, this job wasn't as glamorous as it sounds. It involved poking at the water like goo with a jeweled sphere. After much argument over who had read the How to Create a World manual correctly, they finally dipped the sphere into the goo and stirred it like a giant cosmic cocktail. From the droplets that fell from the sphere emerged the first island of Japan. They stood on this newborn landmass, decidedly less gooey, and gazed around. Not bad for a spear throw, Izanagi said. I've seen Messier worlds, Izanami retorted. The gods decided to stick around and populate the place. Being divine and all, they made love and gave birth to a myriad of gods, goddesses, and other beings who were probably destined for starring roles in future myths. But their domestic life wasn't without snags. One day, Izanami gave birth to Kagetsuchi, the fire god, and unfortunately, this divine delivery came with a bit too much of a flame factor. Poor Izanami was severely burned and, in what can only be described as the worst postpartum experience ever, died and descended to Yomi, the land of the dead. Izanagi, grief-stricken but probably thinking he should have stuck to star drops instead of fireplace experiments, decided to rescue her. He bravely ventured into Yomi with the hopes of pulling off a divine romantic gesture. However, when he found Izanami, she was not the goddess of his memories but a terrifying, decayed corpse who apparently wasn't keen on returning to the land of the living. Like a wise man once advised, never surprise visit someone in the underworld. A dramatic and messy escape ensued, with Izanagi sealing the entrance to Yomi with a boulder, leaving his love behind. To ward off the impurities from his underworld escapades, Izanagi took a purifying bath that produced even more deities. One would think he had a factory output of gods at this point. Among these newly born deities were the sun goddess Amaterasu, the moon god Tsukuyumi, and the stormy and often temperamental Susanu. These siblings, with their distinct sky-high personalities, went on to have their own epic tales, ensuring that the pantheon of Japanese mythology remained bustling and vivid. And that, my friends, is how Japan came to be, a nation born out of divine squabbles, celestial craftsmanship, and the occasional underworld drama. Isn't history delightful?